we were talking about uh, plans we had for my birthday actually and um, she uh, said she would see me on Saturday and this was Thursday night and the last thing she said to me as she was leaving was uh, she waved her hand back up like this and went love you bye so um, I thank I think every day about that is the last thing we said to each other was that we loved each other, so. Yeah. It was, um, it was really hard to not have her there anymore, so I, um, I, I didn't go back for a little while to school. It was really hard and I'm, I took the rest of the year off and then ended up going back for grade 12 year. When I did this, I actually had some people that um, thought it was wrong to name her after her and were kind of more like, wow, well, why would you name your daughter after some girl that killed herself or something? What will you say to those people? But that's not the reason why, that they missed the point completely and the memory of the person that she was, like, you know, she's kind-hearted and she cared about others and that's the traits I would want my daughter to have, you know, that's the reason. Yeah. yeah there's a few Rateas out there now. <laughs> um, and again, that just warms my heart to know that, uh, well, for, for Bryony, she knew Rataya, and she says as, you know, her daughter grows up, she's going to tell her about Rataya, and that is, yeah, every time her name is mentioned, her story's told, that keeps her alive in so many ways. I have been just unbelievably impressed by young people and young males who are saying, you know what, I'm not going to tolerate that. I have a sister, I have a friend, I, and keep doing what you're doing because that's what's going to make a difference in the world. If anything, I just knew of her. It was just a simple high school party, but uh, people's lives are ruined. And why? Just because we were just... You know, it was just an evening of looking to have some fun. I think what really made the heart change for me was just uh, knowing that my sister uh, knew Ratea and had kind of like the inside scoop of what had gone on. I guess with that, it just it really upset me to realize, you know, this young girl is no longer here. Her family is forever ruined, and being maybe too harsh on myself, I can see that I too could have caused something like that to happen. I too could have ruined a young girl's life. I too could have ruined, you know, an entire family's life. And it's just, it's just realizing, well, I don't want to ever be in that situation. I guess the large part of the reason why I went down there and wanted to speak was because, you know, I feel there's a lot of truth to my perspectives, uh, mainly because when I talk to a lot of other guys, you know, they, or I mentioned that I've talked on sexualized violence, they don't say anything or they'll kind of chuckle and it's just, or they'll, they'll say a comment back to me and it's like, well, maybe the truth is that close that you feel uncomfortable. And, Again, I, I think the main motivator for me to go down there was it was just a great opportunity to uh, share Ritea's story, but also 
share some perspectives that I've been brought to that can maybe help people have a greater quality of life. So. I know there's a lot of people out there that really need that law in place because there's no repercussions for them and they're, they're suffering and going, sorry, we can't help you. And that's just not good enough, especially when you're dealing with young people. You're hearing about that right now? About cyber abuse? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And where do they have to turn? Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. If it had been properly put together from the get-go, outside of perhaps the emotional environment that it, that it started in, we would have had something that, that endured and we wouldn't have been left with this, uh, with this gap. Well, I think first and foremost we needed to, and we need to, simplify and streamline the process by which somebody goes to court. Uh, a model that I talked about when I was when the government was asking me when the legislation was being drafted was something similar to what we have for peace bonds, uh, which is a, a, something under the criminal code where somebody makes an application. It's relatively straightforward paperwork. It goes to the provincial court. The, it, it's kind of it, it's scrutinized. If it goes forward, then the person gets to stand up in the witness stand and tell their story to a judge, and the person on the other side gets to stand up and tell their story to the judge. You put forward whatever evidence you want, but it's, it's relatively straightforward and, it, and it's a relatively short time frame. It's not perfect by, by any means, but it is way, much more streamlined than starting a lawsuit. When you look at, at the situation with, with Rotea Parsons, obviously there are issues with the, with the justice system, with the, the criminal justice system uh, that have been looked at. I don't know whether they've been fully addressed, but there were also questions about the, the education system, there were the adolescent mental health, so many things. So the law is just one piece of it, and, and hopefully it's part of a holistic kind of way of, of are we going to rejig this system so that we don't have a repeat? That's another message I try to teach the youth is, it's never about you. It's the person who is doing this doesn't like who they are. Because people who like who they are don't feel the need to harm other people. And it's trying to empower youth, because of course you have to empower them to let them know it, it really isn't them. But they also need to be able to say, this is happening, and then the adults need to step in and actually do something. Resiliency, self-worth, um, compassion, connection with others, um, building self-confidence, having healthy boundaries with relationships with your family, with your friends, in your intimate relationships, um, even uh, healthy boundaries within uh, social media and technology and, um, you know, just being able to say them out loud um, and have a a group of females your age, peers, that support you and don't judge you and really are so proud of you for even talking about it was really, I think, life-changing for some of the girls. Um, how did you hear about Rotea's story? I heard about it from my parents. I remember seeing it on the news actually and I was like, my mom told me about it and I was like, I was thinking how awful it was. I couldn't even imagine if I was in that situation and as a 10 year old, you know, like you don't really think about that kind of stuff until it happens and I was just like really baffled about hearing about it, that someone could do that to someone else. I think maybe like the Rotea story was talked about with adults but who it really needs to be focused on is like teens, like people our age, like that's who it happened to a girl that was 15 and that's who we should be talking to about it. So 
So there are many ways that a lot of things have come into um, fruition because of Ritea and that we've learned that, you know, I think as a society, that when you get hurt and have traumatic things happen to you, that it affects many areas of your life and that we really need to have a more holistic sort of plan in place to uh, help students out when things happen to them and hopefully to help us prevent those things from happening as well.